All right. So we're continuing in the 29th um, letter, speaking about reincarnation, and not just reincarnation, which is a topic we spoke about previously, but, you know, before a soul is reincarnated, it goes to, it goes through a process. al Rebbe doesn't really speak about the process here so much, but just uh, some context, background. Soul leaves this world. By the way, incidentally, what we learned in the previous letter, that when I, that a soul brings, um, in passing from a righteous person, brings um, atonement to to the generation when a righteous person passes away. But um, passing away brings atonement for the soul itself. That's an important idea. Because the soul needs to go through a process, it needs to go through a cleansing process after being in this world. Um, that's part of what Gehenna is, uh, loosely translated as hell, but it's not really. It's it's like a, a scolding hot bath, metaphorically, where you you know, like the mother has to cleanse her child who got filthy, and that's a consequence. But ultimately, for the purpose of that soul going into Gan Eden, to the Garden of Eden. Now, once in the Garden of Eden which we're going to discuss about today, um, that soul can eventually come back because it did not fulfill everything it needs to fulfill. And as I have mentioned previously, for the most part, we are um, what you call old souls because we've been here. And we're an hour back. Now, the fact that we've been here, this uh, unique idea of uh, in, in Jewish teachings is reincarnation means your purpose hasn't been fulfilled so an element of your soul has to come back because you know let's say if you come back many times so then are you a new person are you a different person are you the same person before when you came back you're a new person carrying on that mission that was not accomplished by the previous person so you're that new person but you are connected soulfully and you are so to speak like you know take a branch and you have um leaves off the branch so each leaf is a separate leaf but they're all from the same branch each branch has its unique purpose so general purpose, let's say, um, or general specific, whatever you want to call it. Torah is the general. The specific is which limbs need to be, you know, uh, vested with a garment to have its fulfillment. So the soul comes back, but it's only an, a, a spark of the soul, so to speak. It's a that now um, springs up a new leaf on the branch. So it's not exactly the same, per it's not the same person, but the exact kind of personality and being. It's a new person that's connected to that soul and the mission of that soul that was incomplete previously. So the different idea, so it's, you know, Um, and, and, and there is a very deep-rooted connection between those souls. So, therefore, it has to come back again, as we mentioned earlier. But where we're at right now is in Gan Eden. In Gan Eden, so the Alta Rebbe explains, based on uh, the Zohar and Talmud teachings, that Gan Eden, there's really two dimensions, two levels. And by the way, something important. Gan Eden, where is it? So everybody points, well, point upwards, right? It's not really upwards. It's right here. 
but it's a different dimension. It's a different dimension that we are not attuned to. Righteous people uh, um, can be or are attuned to it. I can't tell you exactly, but there are stories from tzaddikim that we understand that they are indeed attuned to uh, what's going on in Gan Eden. And it is a different dimension. And this idea we mentioned actually previously in, in the... I think it was in this letter, actually. Yeah, it was in this letter <laughs> previously, right? That when Yaakov walked, uh, Jacob walked into his father to get the um, firstborn blessings, brought him uh, food, the, it says he walked in with the the, the tam reyach of Gan Eden, the taste and smell of Gan Eden, of the Garden of Eden. Meaning, it's not, a, it's not somewhere else, it's here. It's just a different dimension. You need a, you know, I don't think it's not the sixth sense you need. You need that you, that the spirit is so dominant over the physical reality that the spirit is the true reality of the individual. The soul is the true reality. And therefore, you can be attuned to those soulful um, things and people and souls and the like. That's why the stories in Tanakh that, you know, speak about souls coming and, you know, and you know, we're, we're just not attuned to these things and we're, we're not privy to it because we're kind of physical, coarse, you know, and uh, not attuned. So, Gan Eden. Two levels of Gan Eden. One is in the world of Asiya and one is in the world of Yitzira, the world of formation. That's where the souls are. Those uh, souls um, occupy both worlds and um, depending on our divine service down here will dictate the soul up there. So the world of Asiya means a world of action. So the souls that are there are the ones that their actions were appropriate actions in Torah and mitzvahs. So the truth is all mitzvahs have to have an action element to it. Even the study of Torah, there has to be some kind of uh, speech, right? Um, to fulfill the mitzvah of Torah, of study of Torah. Likewise with prayer, right? If you just uh, think the words or you just, um, you know, meditate, you don't fulfill prayer. It needs to be actually in a practical manner that one moves their lips in order to create speech. And, and, and therefore that is actual articulation of prayer, right? Now that that prayer um, is a physical act. That uh, lighting Shabbos candles, putting on tefillin, is a physical act. The keeping of Shabbos is a physical activity. So that creates a garment for the soul that allows the soul to be privy to the lower level of Gan Eden. But there's also kavana intent. Uh, the love and awe that we have of God, the, the love of awe that we um, use our hearts in Torah study, in prayer, in you know the fulfillment of mitzvahs. Meaning, it's not just the act that we're doing, but there is an illumination of our heart, of the love and awe of God. And that creates a uh, a garment that allows the soul to um, be elevated to a higher world, the world of Yitzira, which that's called Gan Eden Elyon, the higher level of Gan Eden. Uh, the world of Yitzira is a world of divine emotion. So that brings the soul that had a, a an emotion towards God of love and awe to that particular, to that world. And allows then for a higher level 
of the vine, as we explained yesterday. Um, pleasure, delight in the divine. Because you've created a garment. And a garment here means a garment that allows protection. That the light of God should be a light that we can entertain. That we can, um, we can uh, behold. That we can apprehend. Now, all of that is only accomplished in our time here in this world. After we finish our time here, you know, we don't have now the opportunity to do a physical act of mitzvah or to have the love and awe of God in that physical act of the mitzvah. So we got a chaparayim. And uh, the Alter Rebbe, it's a very short class today, and the Alter Rebbe concludes it, says, um, you know, as it was explained in the first part of, of Lukotei Marim of Tanya, in chapter 38, and what do we explain over there, is that the mitzvah has a body to it and has a soul to it. The body of it is the action, and the soul is the devotion, the, the kavana, the intent that we have in doing the action that we're doing for the sake of heaven, that we're doing it um, with the love and awe of God. And um, both are desired by God. God wants the action. He also wants the love and awe. In other words, the, 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 the intent, the, the, um, that devotion, both are an expression of the divine will of God, meaning God wants both. He doesn't want just the intent. He just doesn't want our feelings that we have. He also wants the action. He doesn't want just the action, right? He also wants the intent. He wants both things. Both are valuable because of the divine will. In other words, the love and awe is not valuable because, well, it's the love and awe of God, so of course it's important. You know, what's an action? I mean, can, we would think that, okay, the action is important only because God said. Otherwise, you know, in the, from a human perspective, the action is not, um, you know... Uh, isn't the prayer only to bring you to a feeling of love? Well, so what do I have to move my lips in the in the act of prayer? Because anyways, it's only in order that I can um, come to a, a feeling of connection to God, of love and awe. So no, there's a value in that it's a, God desires it. And you know what the value of the love and awe of, of God is? Because God values it. Not because that's what we want. Because he values it. That's what we learn. So, what does he value? He wants to have a body and a soul in the devotion to, the, to, to him. And uh, each one has its end game, in a sense that it's got an end in itself. Because through the act of a mitzvah, we bind ourselves to the essence of God through the um, intent of the mitzvah, the kavana. Uh, that we do it to, uh, to attach ourselves to God with love and awe of God that illuminates the mitzvah, makes it an illuminated mitzvah, illuminated connection, as God desires that too, as we just said, um, and allows the soul then to uh, rise to a higher level. And that's it, folks, for today. I hope that was clear. see if I got any questions here. Marlene from New York City, welcome. Rena from Colorado. Leo from the Philippines, Shalom. Sandy, welcome. Lou from Yardley, Pennsylvania, Boca Tov. Nika from England, Shalom. Greg from Mexico, Shalom. Troy is with us from Durban, South Africa. Shalom to you. And Louis from Florida. Elaine from Georgia. Alice, south of our border, yes, in Baltimore. <laughs> when a soul comes back into the world, is it still connected to the souls that it had in the previous life? Yes, it's still connected to it, right? Connected in purpose. Yes. Ella, shalom to you in Arizona. Brian in Uganda. Oh, welcome. Lara in Queens. Julie in uh, Florida. Cindy in Portland, Oregon, Shalom. Rick in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Are the wicked and the truly wicked souls reincarnated? I mean, it's possible that there... W That's a good question. All right. 
Um, I think yes, but I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Hitler's soul is reincarnated. Uh, Jane Bokatov to you in Illinois. Is the body chosen in a specific way for the Nishama? Yes. Erica, what happens to the garment and the soul of the mitzvah after we have done them? They're eternal. That's why where our soul goes into Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, you know, it's there. People have passed away, you know, thousands of years ago. Their soul is still thriving in Gan Eden because they are into the souls that they created in their lifetime. So it doesn't, you know, it, it connects to the divine attributes above and as the divine attributes are one with God, so therefore there is an eternal quality to it, which is really important, you know, to think about that, you know, when we do a mitzvah, that there's an eternal um, eternal uh, value to it. It doesn't go away. That's why Mashiach is going to come, even though there might be a lot of evil in the world, because good is like a, a heap. The heap gets bigger and bigger uh, because you're adding more and more mitzvahs on that mound, on that mountain. You're doing more and more mitzvahs. So that means that um, it's it, the, the, the goodness is growing. Evil dissipates. Evil is not a true reality. It's not a true reality, so it, um, it, it doesn't have an eternal quality to it. God is eternal and only good. And, and is all good, only but good. So therefore, the good that we do, as a reflection of Him, to our mitzvahs, is eternal. Thank you, Clem. should be well. Uh, when a person is physically disabled, God forbid, how does it affect the soul and the soul's mission in this world? It doesn't take away from the fact that a person can have a, a mission even though they are disabled. Their mission will be in those areas you know, that are necessary to uh, whatever that person needs to fulfill. As the Rebbe says, a person who is disabled, they, should, they shouldn't be looked at as disabled people. The Rebbe says they should look as they are very unique and special um, uh, people because um, because of the disability means that they have in another area greater qualities and those greater qualities they are mitsuyan they are wonder there's a wonderment and greatness about them uh, as a result when the soul returns does it come back to the same ancestry hmm uh, the ancestry of souls yes I don't know if it means ancestry of you know no, not it doesn't mean ancestry of physical, you know, the same family line. No, no, no not necessarily. Okay, Shoshana Bina. Um, okay. So all of them, Linda. We'll come back. That's why I said, you know, each one has its unique personality. Um, so they all will come back. My tree is amazing. There, no, we have one soul and one body. Um, Ali Shev is asking uh, if the soul doesn't need the healing in this lifetime or another lifetime. Well, the whole point of coming into this world is in order that we should have, we should fix and heal that which we need to fix and heal in this lifetime if we don't fulfill it. So that's why a soul would come back. How do we know uh, what are pending mitzvahs to fulfill? Chris, excellent question. Um, you know, what do we need to fulfill? You know what? The ones that we shy away from. The ones we find difficult. The ones that are easy, that's not the ones. 
the ones that are difficult, the ones that we shy away from, those are the challenges. That's where it is. Thank you for asking that, Chris. Yeah. You thought we'd get an easy pass on this one, huh? No. Because exactly where the struggle is, that's exactly where we need to be found. The opposite of what we desire. Because that's fulfilling God's desire. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim, Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Please share it with others, folks. It's a lot to share here. Have a wonderful day. Good uh, Fach, good week.